The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Proclamation of the gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem, in Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring him me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a song entitled, We Three Kings. We three kings of Orient High. Remember that song? Yes. Well, actually, the individuals who came to see Jesus were not kings. They were astrologers. They were the ones that studied the stars. So, when Herod told them to go, they of course said, oh sure, we'll go, we'll just follow this star. And that's what they did. And of course, in the process, they found this star, all of a sudden it stopped. And there it was. They said, there is the Christ child, there is Jesus the one that they were looking for. And so, as a result of that, they presented their gifts, which we heard about, and in the process of presenting their gifts, they also were deeply touched by the encounter with Jesus. And I think that's the important part to remember always with regard to how they were touched so deeply by Jesus. And Isaiah, I think, brings it out so forcefully in that first reading today, 
is going to be that light, that light shining in the darkness, because Jesus brought that light to us and then said to each one of us too, you are to be that light to others. You are to be that light. He is the light shining in the dark. And of course, at this particular time, especially since we change time, you notice how dark it gets around four or five o'clock already at night. And so we start complaining about that. Well, I would invite you then to go to Barrow, Alaska. Because in Barrow, Alaska, there is no sun. It's starting of December until January 24th, believe it or not. No sun at all. So when the sun comes back on January 24th, everybody celebrates because this is a marvelous light, uh, the sun, how important that is when the sun shines. Aren't we, isn't it so true that we're all of us seem more alive. And, uh, but as far as the sun is concerned, can never compare to the light of Jesus. So when Herod hears that this baby uh, is born, Herod, the man with all his power and so on, got afraid. Think about that. And so he sends these uh, messengers, these ast uh, astrologers, to, to Jesus. And of course, this is the individual of whom Paul speaks of so powerfully in that second reading today, too. He says, yes, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul was. And the Gentiles, if you know from the, the history of the Gentiles, especially with regard to the temple, when they went into the temple area, they were cut off from the rest of the people. And there was a big dividing uh, wall there. It was at least five feet high. And, and Paul was trying to say, get rid of that. Because Gentiles are now also uh, heirs to this kingdom of Jesus. And what have we done? Well, we built the wall in Germany, didn't we? German wall. Now we want a wall on our borders. Instead of saying no, what we need are bridges so that we as, as individuals say, yes, can I be a bridge in someone's life? So that if you know where there is some conflict, particularly in a family, and you act then as a bridge to bring these individuals together. That's the challenge that we have, the ability to be able to do that. Then, once we are able to do that, then we can say to ourselves, yes, then I can present my gift to Jesus too. What's a gift that you want to bring to Jesus this morning? Think about that. What's a gift that you could undoubtedly uh, say, yes, this is what I want to do. Carl Sandburg was once asked, what's the ugliest word in the English language? The ugliest word. And there was a long pause. And he said, the ugliest word in the English language is separation. Exclusion. And so true. So we have to ask ourselves in all sincerity as we celebrate this feast today, do I exclude anyone from my life? And if Jesus is going to touch my life as he touched the lives of these uh, uh, wise people, because what did they do? They did not go back to uh, Herod. They went a different route. That's the encounter, see? We have to really encounter Jesus in the coming year so that it will change our lives, so that we in turn will not be able to exclude anyone from our lives. Can we do that? Yes. yes.